Hi, so today I'm going to explain about the final individual outcome from for the fieldwork subject based on the PBL report. And my name is Nur Izatul Shafina Binti Imran and this presentation is specifically for Dr. Robert Francis Peter. So in this presentation there are six parts that is important as the contents the introduction, research objective, study area, guidelines, results and the end of fieldwork inspection. So moving on to the first part where the chosen site for the fieldwork inspection here is the Shalom Valley in Anam River for based on the aquatic ecology subject field trip. And the purpose for the water sam sampling technique from the aquatic ecology field trip is to teach students how to operate as a team while also ensuring that the water sample acquired is accurate or at least theoretically accurate. And in situ water quality parameters will measure in different aquatic habitats where the water samples are also collected for total suspended suspended solid analysis. We call it as TSS as the short form. And in this field trip where aquatic insects were also collected from different aquatic habitats such as the run, riffle and pools, then they were sorted enumerated and identified in the lab and the research objective for for the Shalom Valley aquatic ecology ecology subject field trip is first of all we need to measure the physical and chemical parameters of water we need to specify the physical and chemical parameters of water because both physical and chemical parameters water are different and they can affect the water samples quality. Second is to determine the total suspended solids from water samples collected from lotic sites. Third, we need to learn how to collect aquatic insects. To collect insects and aquatic insects is two different methodologies. So in aquatic ecology, they specify specifically on how to collect aquatic insect and lastly to identify the aquatic insect captured from the lotic site we need because we already collect the aquatic insect so we need to identify the taxonomy and identification of the aquatic insects so the study area of the fieldwork is situated and conducted at shalom valley park at Inanam River, Inanam, Sabah. So, for those who didn't know, Inanam is actually one of the Kota Kinabalu suburb and actually a sub-district in Sabah where it is located about 15 minutes from the center of city, KK, Kota Kinabalu and 10 minutes from our campus, University Malaysia, Sabah. So, this is this is the map obtained from the Google Maps. Basically, it is located near area of Kionsom, of the Kionsom Road. And moving on to the next part, which is about guidelines, where the water samples, the physical or chemical characteristics from rivers, from three different part habitat of the rivers, which is pool, run and riffle, and aquatic insect collecting can both be done using all written guidelines set by responsible authorities. So the guideline here generally a lot of it depends on the field, field work of the field set because different different field work has different guidelines but generally generally for aquatic ecology, they have their own written guidelines when students want to conduct a specific aquatic ecology or aquatic any aquatic activity based on the aquatic ecology subjects. So, first part here is on how the general guidelines for collecting water samples because 
aquatic ecology will be mostly related with water samples. So, first of all, the first guideline is we need to know where the sample is taken, the location. Because the location could impact on the results, where this can be determined by the description of the station, the position of landmarks in lakes by checking the depth. Or, if samples must be taken from a board, a sampling station must be marked. This, this point described that if you want to take a water sample, for, for example, you need, to, you need to mark a point. So, if you want to take from the upstream, take a specific GPS from there. And if you want to take on the downstream, also take the GPS. But if you don't want to take upstream or both or downstream, for example, you want to take on rifle, run or pulls, you also need to take or mark the specific GPS or at least mark by something that you can easily spot on. And second is any large or non-homogeneous debris such as leaves should not be included in the sample. So when we obtain a depth sam sample, avoid touching or disturb the bottom of the water body because this will cause the particle to become suspended. So when you already arrive at a specific location or site in that river where you want to take the water sample, do not touch the water samples or any any sample that you need to take any and in insert it into a water container or water bottle, water, sam water sample bottle. Because if you touch it, there will be some sort of, there will be some sort of uh, dirty and debris and this will, this will disrupt and disturb the water sample's quality. That is, a bottle that is used for transport or storage of sample must be rinsed three times of with the portion of samples before being filled. This does not apply if the storage bottle already contains a preservative chemical. This part means that the water samples this this must be applied beforehand that it beforehand before you arrive at the at the site you want to collect the water sample. The water must be rinsed three times enough to see that the, the, water the water bottle, the container is clean. Because if there is a slight uh, debris or dirt, it will affect the water sample's quality. And if there is already like a specific preservative in that quality, in that container, do not remove it because that will be needed to store for specific water samples or aquatic insects. And fourth, by any time the samples bottles are not closed, their tops must be kept in a clean place. So any any unclosed water samples, the container must be kept in a clean and undisturbed place because we don't want any debris or dirt to include it in that water sam in that water container, water samples container. Fifth, a sample aspect should be left in the sample bottle to allow the sample to mix before analysis. The water water container should have a little bit of space in in that container because if you put all water samples from the river in that small in that small container it will not look really nice because it it should have a little bit of space to give air so that it will not be too airtight not like loose but it should have a little bit air space and last but lastly all measurement taken in the field must be recorded in the field notebook before leaving the sampling station so for identification of aquatic insect, first of all, we need to select a location in the stream where there is a little ripple, flow or pool. And second, slowly move up, 
trim to the specific river habitat to avoid disturbing the study area before the net is placed. Third, place the net vertically in the water while standing behind the downstream. Then, make the tip of the net 45 degree and we must not stand in front of the net as it will block any insect collection. So to keep the net in place and prevent the trash from flowing under it, place a medium-sized boulders or heavy rocks at, on the bottom of the net. And lastly, begin sampling in the collection area and continue until few aquatic insects will remain and will be collected. So, as for the results, the plastic bottles were used to collect three replicates of both samples in various habitats, including a pool and river. So, three, di three aquatic box specimen containers were collected in various habitats, including pool, river, and run. And during the later lab session, the aquatic insects will be discovered. This will be referred to the attachments later. This is the example of aquatic insect collected that is composed of few order of Hemiptera, Odonata, Trichoptera, and Megaloptera. For the end of fieldwork inspection, first of all, we need to know the condition of the place of the sampling. So, all equipment should be inspected thoroughly by remo removing visible dirt and check the list if there are any missing parts and all equipment should be enough and completed as beginning as the beginning by the end of sampling process and any used or unused equipment bottles we should isolate isolate them by labeling them properly to ease for the labor, laboratory process third all the place or area that had been used must be cleaned beforehand before we want to leave the fieldwork location and lastly Group leaders, they are responsible for making sure all group members are complete and present before leaving the study site and informed to the respective supervisor. Second part is the condition of the tools, equipment after the sampling. So we need to check, clean, disinfect and dry all water sample equipment or apparatus such as the YSI multi-parameter, trays, forceps, and kickness. The on-site cleaning and disinfection should be done in a way with no soap or chemical residue enters the kennel. This is very important because we don't want any water pollution. Before going on to the next cleaning area, make sure the effort to eliminate any debris and other kit materials. And in general, the sample bottles should be resealed and stored in a clean, cool, dark environment and protected from contaminations because we don't want the water samples will be disturbed from any extreme temperature of the sunlight and the temperature should be between 4 degrees Celsius or room temperature. And each sample bottle must be provided with an identification label on. Third is the safety. Suitable protective clothing such as rubber gloves should be provided and is used by the staff and strongly encouraged. The field staff should be trained and recognize any deal, as many as possible, of the hazard as they are likely to encounter because they need to help. They are the first person that students will gonna reach if something happens. A basic first aid kit should be carried at all times and should not be left should not be left at the transport vehicles if staff are obliged to move any significant distance from it. So this is the attachment and the pictures from the fieldwork Shalom Valley. These are the water quality data sheet. And that's all for me. Thank you for listening.